I'll bet you didn't know I like playing snooker. Here I am at practice table right now, a little bit of right hand side or running side. Gonna try to get the white ball down at the other end, leave nothing for my fake opponent. Looks like a pretty good break. So my goal here is to pot the black, put a little bit of bottom on it. Give me some good shape for one of those reds. That looks like it worked out pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna try and cut this blue and put the white down at the other end with the reds. Tricky shot. Managed to pull it off. Not too bad so far. I've got one red available to the right side. I'm gonna to try to get it in there. Leave myself on a nice color if I can. Trying to square up on it or line up. Let's see how I do here. Not too bad. So on this shot, what I'm trying to practice is my bottom side. See if I can't get that white ball to come back off the cushion. Uh, in a perfect world, I'd be on that pink, but it's right up against those reds. This will be the last shot before I do the video on the SOG Terminus XR. I'm going to try to put the blue in the left side pocket. And uh, I'm going to try to get it off of that far cushion, get the, uh, get the white ball back at this end and play for these reds. Can I do it? I'm not playing with any side or anything. Let's see how I make out. Well, well, I got, well, I got the pot, but I kissed the brown. That's it, end of break. Greetings, everyone. I hope you're having a super fantastic day wherever you are. Yeah, we're gonna look at the SOG Terminus XR from the Studies and Observations group uh, over at SOG. I've carried this now for a couple of weeks since I've opened it. I just wanted to show you the packaging and the easy one hand open with the XR lock ambidextrous and the cryogenically hardened steel, the Terminus XR G10. I think there's other flavors and iterations out there. And I just wanna run you through some of the specs on the back of the box. That'll save me some time and talking. You can pause it pretty much anywhere you like. We got a G10 handle. The XR lock, I do like it. And uh, the reversible low carry or deep carry pocket clip. I'll talk about all of this as I start to show it. There's these specs, the weight, 3.4 ounces. And that's of note, it's very, very light. I find it to be very comfortable. Uh, the blade length is three inches. I think this falls into the EDC category. And I'll show you a bunch of different offerings on the table here shortly. And we've got a blade steel of D2. And of course, the thing that's gonna turn everybody off the most at least what I've seen in the comments so far is it's been made in um, Mr. Black. That's what we're dealing with. Somebody in the comments, please let us know, did this company sell out? <laughs> like um, Cold Steel? I've heard rumblings, and, but I can't really prove that. And I've carried this for a week now, and I have run it on the Sharp Maker, and I have stropped it. It's razor sharp. One thing I like about it right off the bat is it is a high saber grind, so it's very thin behind the edge. It has been extremely slicey, and uh, I do like the D2. I've talked about the D2 many times on my channel. I don't know the difference between cryogenically and uh, regular D2. I'm gonna talk about the things I like. I like the ergos. I like the size, the weight. I like the G10. I like the XR lock can usually do this consistently. The only thing that I've done is added a little bit of three-in-one oil. And of course, when I'm behind the camera, eh, probably need another drop. Because one thing I've noticed with the black coating is that it starts to wear off. And see if I can't get you in. Yeah, you can see it's starting to shine up there. You see that on the blade? It was all black before. So I'd imagine it's starting to build up a little bit of um, communism on the inside there. And that's probably why it's not, yeah, it's just not as smooth as it was a couple of days ago. All in all, it is a good steel and a good blade shape. I think it makes a really good EDC. I also like the fact that it's a flipper and the flipper is not too aggressive. 
and it's not too passive. It's it's the uh, Goldilocks uh, of flippers. You can also use the thumb studs. And it, it is true, it is ambidextrous. And to remove the pocket clip, you just remove this screw, which goes all the way through, and then just pull it out of the slot and put it into the other slot. And then, of course, the screw would be going in that direction. Pretty simple. I have taken this pocket clip out. I have loosened all of these screws. I have not been able to remove the pivot. I don't know if that's a problem with all of them. I've hit it with heat um, without melting the G10. I just used a soldering iron and just got it really hot. I could not, as a matter of fact, I broke the tip off of one of my Torx bits, wouldn't move. So rather than going any further and stripping that out, and you're asking why would I even bother to do that? Well, the one thing that's bothering me is I can't get it centered. Now I have got a lot of tricks when it comes to centering. Let's find that light, there it is. When it comes to centering, and a lot of you are probably going, that there's nothing wrong with that. But if this is a hobby for me, if you're watching this video, it's probably a hobby for you as well. One of the pastimes is blade centering. I've got several videos on this channel on that topic. So I couldn't get it centered. Um, I'll maybe, I'll try it again. I, I'm afraid that I'm gonna strip these out, which means, yeah, not, not good things. I don't think there's anything I could do about that. So I think I'll just leave it as is. Now the actual pocket clip, is fine the retention is fine it goes in and out of my pants no problem the only minor thing i would say is i don't like the the way it's finished with the paint and honestly the sog there doesn't really bother me that much some people hate that stuff it, this one doesn't really bother me uh, i would have liked to seen it more in a in an anodized kind of a or a oxide just sort of a, more of a match rather than just a slight bling. And it's already starting to wear off here. Let me zoom in. Yeah, so that's only about a week and a half or two weeks in the pocket. So it's not too bad. In, in a little while, it's going to be, you know, well broken in. So that's a very minor thing. The centering, again, it is a minor thing, but... I will probably figure out how to do it. I need to loosen that. Anyways, I, I digress. I keep going on on the centering. Other than that, not too bad. Very small. I think this is a very good EDC knife. I'm going to bring in a whole bunch of other knives that fit this category, and I'll talk about the lock and all these other things. Give me one second. Okay, so what you're looking at is a whole pile of knives that would be in the same category, the everyday carry category. Uh, there's a couple here that are obviously uh, elephants in the room. Let's move them out of the way. I consider the paramilitary too an everyday carry knife. Um, how do you make a really ugly knife uglier? Just add one of these on there and suddenly it's grotesque. But... Uh, Anyway, there's a size comparison of the uh, PM2 versus the Terminus. You can see that it's a lot smaller in all kinds of ways, but it is a comfortable EDC knife. So let's put the, uh, the ugly duckling back on the table there. Let's bring in this one. This one is a different category altogether. This is the Hest Urban F, I believe. Now you can see that the size comparison, we're starting to get a lot closer here. Uh, different, it's night and day, different materials made in the USA, way, way thicker stock as well. But it'll give you an idea in the size category. And something a little bit closer to home, we got a USA made buck. And this is a 110 Slim Hunter Pro or something like that. And this one is the, um, I believe it's the S30V steel. Just in a size comparison and in the slimness. The buck actually feels a little lighter. 
and we got a Benchmade and we got a Benchmade Osborne 940 for comparison as well. Now we've got the locks that are very similar, different names, but basically the same lock. You can see which one is smoother, but this one's still, uh, the XR is still pretty new. I honestly do like the XR lock. I like the way it, it feels in my hand when I'm deploying or retracting it versus um, the, the axis lock. And we'll bring in another size comparison here. This is the uh, bailout or the bug out. Got those two mixed up. Again, night and day when it comes to materials, where it's made, price, of course. But basically, you know, I would almost say that this one is lighter. If lightness, and this is aluminum, by the way. So... These are the offerings that I have that are very similar. This is a really nice little knife. I haven't done a review on that one yet. Sorry for the dog that's out there somewhere. All right, here we got the bailout. And again, night and day when it comes to materials, price, fit and finish, all that other stuff. But as far as size comparisons are concerned, that might help you. I got medium sized gloves that I wear normally. And sorry about that little Jerry. I know this is kind of a strange EDC, but I do every day carry the 112. Of course, I carried in my leather pouch that I made, the quick draw pouch. And I wanted to bring that out because a lot of people do carry the Buck 112. Of course, it weighs way more than the XR, but just to give you an idea in the size category, because um, some people are going to be attracted to this XR, I think, just based on the size, especially if you like the uh, 112. Now, for an everyday carry knife, I think the SOG is a, is a, is a sweet choice. Again, it's unfortunate as to where it's made, but I would choose the buck for everyday carry and then some, if you know what I mean. And I'm gonna bring in another knife here. The one that started it all for me in the XR lock was the Seal XR. I think that's what it's called, I can't remember now. This one is USA made. I would have liked it if the Terminus was, uh, yeah, the Seal XR. This one's an S35VN, this is again, it's, it's a completely different animal. However, the locks are the same. And this one is running on bearings. Unfortunately, I, because I haven't taken it apart yet, I can't really get under the hood, if you know what I'm saying. So hopefully in a future video, I'll be able to provide a little bit more information. But you can see that it's the exact same uh, mechanism. It's plastic, by the way but it, it's got good purchase and it works really well. I mean, I could do this all day and all night. I think, as a matter of fact, I think I've already done that all day and all night. But I think that's pretty much it. When it comes to little things that I would probably do, I would probably add jimping in here, right in that area there. I think it's on the, yeah, it's on the bug out as well. So they, they kind of went opposite, you see that? But um, other than that, it's not that bad. I would have liked to have seen a little bit of jimping there. And I also probably would have liked to have seen it just a little bit in there as well. Wouldn't be hard to do if I could take it apart. I'd probably do all that myself. In the reverse grip, because of the pocket clip, it's, um, it's okay there, but I mean, it's not gonna be used to hard use I don't think I wouldn't rely on it the way I would rely on this or even this. 
but I think uh, I've illustrated my point. A little bit of a backspace around here. Um, I did take these screws out, as I mentioned. They do kind of meet halfway, so much not much I can do about that, unfortunately. And I think it is a little bit skeletonized in there. You can sort of see it. And you can see there is a little bit of schmutz starting to build up. And that's combination oil and the oxide kind of making a little paste. Um, I have not tested it, but based on, I don't know, based on all the things that, stupid things that I've done with my knives, I would say that this lock is a little bit stronger. I'm saying that it's got a better purchase on the actual blade tang, but of course I can't prove that, it just feels stronger. Way fidget. If fidget is your thing, this is a lot of fun. And when I first got it, it was not as smooth as it is now, of course, because that black oxide was still caked on. And now it's really starting to loosen up. It kind of does feel like it's on bearings. Let me know down in the comments because I'm kind of curious. I sure would like to take it apart and center this up. I think that's pretty much all I can say. It feels good in the hand. I would love to see in a, um, a glass breaker. I am a big fan of glass breakers and little knives like this. Here's a little, a little taste. And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. And I am really sorry for making fun of the ugly duckling in the room. Yeah, I'll probably end up taking that off. It does work though. Let me know if you want to see any more on the XR. I probably will feature it in other videos coming up again especially when it comes to taking it apart and etc. Also let me know if there's anything else you want me to talk about in any future videos. Again, I still have to do a video on this particular bailout. And I think that's pretty much it for now. Later.